Welcome back everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at 3D static plots with financial data. Let's get started. So first off, there's not a lot of times where we get to actually use uh, three-dimensional plotting in finance, uh, but there are some benefits and one application that we're going to look at today is the volatility surfaces uh, showing implied uh, volatility simultaneously with uh, the number of times to maturity and strikes of the trade options. So first off, let's go on and get some basic imports in here. So let's import NumPy as MP. Uh, let's also import um, matplotlib.pyplot as PLT. Uh, and then let's go on and do matplotlib in line. Next thing we wanna do is go on and actually make up the data. So a couple things that we'll want to do here is first, is to make the strike. Uh, and here we'll do something like MP uh, line space, and we want this by 50, by 150, by 24. Uh, and then let's also go uh, times to maturity. And this one will be MP dot uh, line space, and I'll need to fix that one up above here in a second, 0 0.5 to 2.5 uh, to 24. So let's go back up here, it's lens space. And then um, we need to make sure that these are in the correct type of format. So let me actually run these and do uh, strike.shape. You can see here that they are 24 um, uh, by technically by zero. Okay, and so another thing that we're gonna do is do strike and times to maturity, mp.net grid. Okay, and so if, you, if we can read here, again, this is gonna return uh, matrices from coordinate vectors. Okay, so uh, what this will do is it'll actually turn everything into a nice, uh, oops, uh, mesh grid. There we go. Uh, and we'll, let's just take a look here. Now we can take a look again at strike. And notice here now it is actually a matrix. It is not uh, just an array. See here, you can see these double uh, brackets here, okay, as before we had a single bracket. So the next thing we'll want to do is to go on and create our implied volatility here. So we'll do uh, strike uh, minus 100 here, and we want to square, whoops, square this. And I'm gonna actually, just for my own sanity, just put these in, um, parentheses here, and then we want, again, uh, parentheses, and we'll do 100 multiplied by strike divided by the TTM. And then now if we look here, we go IV, and let's just do something like a round. And you can see here now, this one, we actually have some nice uh, data for it as well. Um, and then let's go on and take a look, see here, at what we want to create. So we're gonna go on and um, let's do the simple plot first here, okay? So we want to basically make, it, it's basically gonna be a plane, okay? And let me rerun that, whoops. Um, run that so it's empty. Um, and so let's go on and create a figure, dot fig plot figure dot, let's do a fig size here. Um, and you know, what? I'm going to leave the fig size normal for now. And we'll show you, I'll show you kind of how to uh, spruce this up a little bit. So we want to add a subplot in here. And we need, to, this is important here, is we need the projection uh, to be 3D. Okay, otherwise it's not really going to want to work. And then let's go on. And since, since we're technically making a plane, um, it's going to have a surface. So we're just gonna say a uh, surface here. Um, and this is gonna be axis dot plot surface. And we take the strike, we take the TTM, take the IV, and um, you know what? We're just going to run it as is for now. And you can take a look here. Now this, this is the nice plot, okay? And this doesn't have any information that is really visible to our user, okay? So one thing we can see here 
Now, it may be hard for people to understand what's actually going on here, so let's give it some coloration, okay? So highs are high, lows are low, so they'll have something like, um, let's use CMAP here, and we'll do PLT dot, uh, CMAP for color map, and then we want, um, let's do cool to warm. If I run this in now, notice now these high points here are nice and red, and then they kind of go down in a gradient. Now this is good and all, but this does not tell us anything, okay? We don't know what it means. We don't know uh, what it says. So let's go on, and since, since we're talking about this color map, let's also go on and um, give it a little bit of, um, well, let's give, give it some information, okay? So let's do something like fig dot, uh, color bar and we want this for the surface and then we want to I'll just run it and see all right now this this looks okay now we know that this color bar is is dedicated so uh, basically this 1.2 here is going to be the max and then it's going all the way down to probably zero so this this looks good so let's go on and add in a couple extra a couple extra uh, things here. So let's make in maybe some axis um, labels. So axis dot set x label here, and the x label is strike. Then let's do the axis dot set y label here, and that y label is time to maturity. Then let's do axis set z label here, and this is implied volatility. Okay, let me run this. Now, great, now we have this nice time to maturity, we have this strike, but look here, we get, we got a serious problem going on here, okay? It doesn't, we can't see our y-axis at all, so we need to do a couple things. So maybe let's, let's try the first thing is, what I want to move this um, color, uh, bar over, okay? Well, the easiest way to do that is to use the figure size. Um, and let's do something like a 10 by five. And let's see how that does. That's good, but notice it's still kind of flipping a little bit here, and I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of that. So let's move this to maybe a 10.7. And that looks quite a bit better, okay? Um, it makes our plot nice and big. Maybe I'll zoom out a little bit. Um, but now this bar is quite large. We want it to maybe be half that size, okay? And maybe we want to change some other aspects of it. So let's take a look here. Let's do shrink uh, um, is equal to 0 0.5. Ooh, and that looks nice. But another thing is that maybe it, it looks a little thin. Maybe we want to make it a little bit thicker. So let's change the aspect ratio to equal something like Two, and that's way too big. So let's let's bump this up a little bit, maybe to four. Still too big. Let's bump it up a little bit more to do five. Uh, maybe one more here to six. Yeah, and that looks good. Okay, it looks it has a nice little bit of width to it and everything. And notice now we see this nice cool to hot. Uh, or cool to warm, okay? So it's cool down here, it gets hotter as it goes up. And again, you could always inverse these colors and do all kinds of stuff with that if you so choose. Now, sometimes people find that this is uh, not the type of uh, projection that they maybe want, okay? Um, maybe they want to change it up and have this maybe as a scatter plot, okay? And so what we're gonna do, we're gonna go on and just copy all of this We'll take it down here, and we're going to get rid of this um, bar plot. We're going to get rid of all of this. We're going to take this over, and we want in here to do, instead of this, let's do scatter. And let's see how this does. All right, so this is nice. Notice we still have the same kind of curve we got going on here. And it looks, it, honestly, it looks pretty good. 
So let's see if maybe we want to up the size of these, or maybe we want them to be a little bit darker blue or something like that as well. We can. Um, so uh, another thing that we'd want to do is maybe, let's see here, let's do, let's do color is equal to, um, let's see, navy. Uh, oh, this one doesn't have that. So let's do just a blue. Oops, and there's two. Whoops. Accidentally deleted that. All right, so let's do this again. Let's do C is equal to maybe now. Maybe. Yeah, navy works quite well. Um, but it doesn't. Yeah, I think it'll be okay. Um, and let's change the size of this as well. So let's do size is equal to I don't know, 20. It's about the same as what it is. So let's do maybe 30. Still not changing it the way that I'd like it to. Maybe we'll just leave it blank for now. Um, and let's go on and change the marker. Here, and let's give it um, maybe a tilt, oh, not a tilde. Not to give it a hat here. So then now we have these nice triangles in here. Notice now it kind of looks like it's moving a little bit. And it gives it a little bit of a nice uh, look and feel to it. Okay, so this is just another way to make a scatter plot of the same thing. All right, um, so what we've covered is doing some basic static 3D plots. Uh, if you guys like this, please comment, subscribe, and hit that like button, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.